Hey, good morning. This is Mayor Valensky with the Driving Markets on Sunday, the 4th of August. This is your daily podcast. Let's catch up on where markets are at. Don't forget, we've got a beginner's course on the 25th of August. That will be run by me. And we'll be teaching you all about starting, how to start to trade, fundamentals, what assets to choose, which platforms, what to look for and how to be successful. In addition to that, we've got the mentorship groups that we do. Um, we've got a crypto group, we've got a premier group, which just stocks and shares. We've got a beginners group. Uh, we've got a VIP group, we've got one-to-ones. We've got Zoom calls, live trading, options, all those type of things. So if you want to join it, just have to do is text me. Uh, we do our offering one week free trial for those individuals who want to try um, the crypto group or the beginners group. Um, then after that, obviously, you can have a choice of joining. Okay, let's kick off. So markets are extremely volatile. This is the topic of the day. And this volatility has rapidly increased since the Fed indicated that it's likely to cut interest rates in the near future. Um, this caused a lot of excitement initially when the markets jumped. The Nasdaq, the Dow, they jumped six, 700 points on the back of that news. And all of a sudden, on Thursday and Friday, out came out some very, very negative figures. So on Thursday, you had the figures come out with the Institute of Supply and Management. You had jobless claims, which were bad. Other ISM report was bad. You had hourly wages, which was bad. It was all not looking good at all. And then on Friday, the non-farm payrolls, which the numbers have been manipulated in any case for the last two years, Expected to come in 190,000 and they came in at 114,000 with hourly wages dropping and unemployment rising. And that caused the markets to be shunted. At one stage on Friday, the Dow was down 950 points, which is huge. It closed down 600 points on the day. So what you do have is a hell of a lot of volatility. And because you've got a lot of volatility, and because you've got a lot of now uncertainty relating to the we set reason to the economy, then that's sending market south. So there's now a serious concern of a recession. If there's a concern of a recession, then markets are going to fall even further. In fact, the NASDAQ now is in correction territory, not necessarily bear territory, but correction territory, which comes just before bear market. If it continues falling, then it's going to go into a bear market, and that will cause the algorithms and the computer trading to keep on selling the NASDAQ stocks. So if you're following on the mentorship group, I did state clearly that the video was a sell at 128. I also stated that Tesla was a sell at 272. And I also stated that Amazon was a sell. So if you're following those trades, great. And gold also shot up. But just focus on the NASDAQ and focus on where these markets are going. You've got a situation of uncertainty. And now markets are looking overvalued or f- at least fully valued. Now, where the reason I look at overvalued is because the analysts have marked up the expectation of the earnings of these companies to be so high that if a company doesn't match those expectations, it's sold off. In fact, Apple was one of the only companies that beat expectations and uh, those shares were slightly up. But going forward, for a company to keep on beating expectations based on the analysts uh, writing up or input as to where the company is going in the future, and the companies don't reach those expectations, then the markets are going to be sold off. So, example, Amazon was sold off 12%. And that is only one example of a sell-off where companies don't reach the level of expectations that these analysts are putting forward. So, in the market expects A in the, in the hit B, then there'll be a sell-off. Adding to that, the economic numbers have come out from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the non-farm payrolls, the ISM, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the ISM, jobless claims, then you've got all of the indicators of a recession coming up. If those numbers don't change for the positive next month, then you'll see over the next few months, a market sell-off. A market sell-off could be in the region of 10 to 15%. If it's 20%, then it's called a market crash. A 10% is called a market correction. So we're in for, at least in my opinion, a market correction. 
Will it be a market crash? It all depends on exactly how the algo trading and the computer trading steps in. If you're looking onto commodities, look at gold. Gold, after Friday's report, came it went all the way up to 27.82, then was sold off, sorry, 24.82, excuse me, 24.82, was sold off all the way back down to 24.16, and then closed up on the day 24.42. And that's not taking into account what's going on in the Middle East with the rising tensions between um, Iran, Hezbo Iran, Israel, Hezbollah, Israel, Houthis, Israel, Syria, Israel, and all of the other individual militia groups that are in the Middle East. What Iran is threatening Israel with is a response to Israel's knocking out of Ismail Haniyeh, the political leader of Hamas in Tehran last week, and also the number two of Hezbollah, the Fuad Shukar, who was the number two in Hezbollah, and Iran and Hezbollah have had vengeance. So what they're doing is they're um, getting together and there could be a five front attack, five frontal attack on Israel. Um, that's on a geopolitical scale, which would be Iraq, which would be Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen, the Houthis in Yemen. So the Americans have sent over the sixth fleet with extra um, aircraft carriers in the event of a war. So gold and oil have not yet taken into account a major eruption of war in the Middle East. Talking about that, if it's a limited conflict and it's a matter of no real damage, then it could, be, could pass over quite quickly. However, if there is major damage or deaths in Israel, then Israel will respond and then you've got further escalation and that will affect gold and oil. And um, you're looking onto foreign currency, foreign exchanges, you want to look at the dollar yen. So I put on a sell notice on dollar yen at 162 about three weeks, four weeks ago. It's gone all the way down to 147. So that's a 1500 point turnaround. Um, why? Because the yen is strengthening, came to, an all -time, came to a very, very 30 year low week level at 162, and now it's strengthened back up to 147. If rates go down in the US, then you expect the yen to get stronger and other currencies also to strengthen going forward. So on the foreign exchange side, you can expect a weaker dollar and stronger pairs against the dollar. As far as gold is concerned, as the dollar comes down, expect gold and oil to rise because they're both still priced in US dollars, therefore makes those commodities cheaper. Overall, you've got a general concern of economic news, and a general concern of geopolitical news, so the volatility, as I said earlier on, will continue to increase as far as financial markets are concerned. And this is where the mentorship program comes in, the one-to-ones, because we then help to um, elaborate and give you more substance into your trading to make sure that the volatility doesn't destroy your trading account and your risk manage according to what needs to be done. And that's what separates a good trader from a gambler. Risk management is an essential tool that has to be learnt. So you should all be risk managing your accounts. Looking onto Bitcoin and the crypto sector, so Bitcoin has taken a bit of a battering. Uh, Jesse, who's in charge of the uh, crypto mentorship group, um, stated clearly that it's um, likely to come off, which has come off. So Bitcoin is under pressure. If there is an economic recession, then you could see Bitcoin fall all the way down to 40,000 because Bitcoin will be exposed to economic downturn like the other assets, it's gold, like other assets of shares. What's interestingly enough, which I'm not going to talk about today, is Warren, Buff Warren Buffett has sold his Bank of America shares and also has increased his cash holding on the Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway uh, fund to 277 billion dollars. 277 billion dollars is now holding in cash. So uh, yeah, that's it. So if you want to join the mentorship program, you can text me. If you need a one-to-one, -one, you can text us. And um, don't don't forget the beginners course on the 25th of August. And look forward to seeing you. This is Mayor Valensky with Driving Markets. Have a good day.
Hi, this is Mayor Valensky with the Driving Markets, your daily report on August the 5th. Um, hell of a lot going on here. I mean, uh, there's a, so much. Don't forget, we've got the beginners course on the 25th of August, which you can join. There is a registration fee for that. We've got mentorship groups. We've got one-to-one. You can learn to mentor on FX, on cryptos, on options, shares, indices, gold, oil, bonds. We've got the full rocks. We've got Zoom calls. We've got workshops. We've got really a hell of a lot going on. If you're a beginner, you can join. If you're advanced, you can join. If you're intermediate, you can join. It's all levels. So let's kick off. So the markets are being hammered completely being hammered the nasdaq is down three and a half percent overnight the nikkei dao which is the japanese index was down 12 percent japanese market was down 12 percent overnight which is huge amount uh, the dao is down two percent footsie is down three percent a lot a lot of movement downwards the main concern is to do with economics economic numbers coming out from last week from the states have indicated a recession is on the way and the markets don't like that so what's likely to happen is that the fed is going to end up probably cutting interest rates in between meetings um, the moment the Fed has held off of the last meeting, the markets um, they did indicate they're going to cut rates in September. The markets initially liked that. They bounced up and then came in the horrendous reports, or really bad reports, I should say, on Thursday with the ISM, uh, jobless claims, uh, hourly wages, not non-farm payrolls, and unemployment, etc., to name but a few. There was a whole raft of reports that came in negative, and that shunted the market downwards on Thursday and Friday, and it's continued when the markets opened up on Sunday. The future has opened up on Sunday in the US and Japanese markets and Asian markets were trashed over over trading day and the opening up in Europe, Europe was trashed. So we've got significant downward thrust or downward downward wind. Um, as far as the Nasdaq is concerned, the Nasdaq has now gone into correction territory or you could call bearish territory as far as measures are concerned on the indices and that's going to push all the stocks down. So if you've been following the podcast and following the signals I've been putting on the mentorship group, you'll see that I put in sell notices for Tesla, for NVIDIA, for the Nasdaq, for the S&P, all of those I did put in sell notices on, buy gold I said, and uh, those markets have sub- subsequently come off. So if you did follow those signals, you would be quids in or you'd be dollars up as they call it quids in pounds up um so overall you now got a hell of a lot of volatility and a lot of uncertainty just on the economic front as far as financial markets are concerned now what you don't what you're also going to have is a geopolitical so iran is saber rattling to attack israel in response to israel knocking out ismail Haniyeh, head of hamas political leader in tehran last week and also knocking out Fahoud Shukar, who is number two Hezbollah leader in Lebanon. So Iran, which backs um, uh, Hezbollah and the Houthis and other other organizations in other militant groups in Syria and Iraq, has vowed vengeance and they're preparing for an all-out attack on Israel. The question is, will it be symbolic? Will it be intercepted or will it cause serious damage? If it causes serious damage, death and damage, then you will have a significant response, obviously, from Israel, and that would be an escalation of war. The U.S. has its sixth fleet in the Mediterranean, which is a major, major powerful force, and they've also um, they've also sent over F-22 Raptors, which is the most advanced fighter bombers in the world, to attack Iran in the event of Iran attacking Israel, or support Israel in the event of Iran attacking Israel. So you've got a geopolitical situation which could bear, which could impact obviously oil and gold. So you could have the two major commodities there, which are sensitive to geopolitical factors moving fast oil obviously because of the because of the middle east and war and the supply routes and gold as a safe haven question is where would the u.s dollar come go along well if you look at the u.s dollar especially dollar yen dollar yen's all the way down to 142 i have been quoting it from 162 saying can expect it to fall to 145 142 and it has fallen to that level so that was a great call as far as any fx trader that wants to get involved in that so dollar yen has gone down 2,000 pips from three weeks ago, which is huge. The yen was very weak at a 30-year low, and it's just strengthened all the way down to 142. And I could see it now going to 135, especially if rates are cut in the US. When the Fed does cut rates, then you're going to have a probably fall further fall in financial markets there'll be an initial rally of markets moving up and then there'd be a sell-off as rates come in lower 
uh, moving rates lower could happen in between Fed meetings because the markets are now very, very worried that overall recession is going to take place. I've been saying there's a recession in the US already for a while and it is going to happen with rising unemployment and falling corporate earnings. All of that is going to bear out in terms of recession as far as financial markets are concerned. Um, looking elsewhere at bonds, the yields on 10-year Treasury has dropped all the way down to 3.79, 3.79, which again indicates that interest rates are going to come down. That's the lowest it's been in about 18 months, if I'm correct. I could be wrong on that. And two-year yields have also fallen. So the bond markets are indicating a fall in um, U.S. interest rates, and that will help mortgages and help mortgage holders. It might stimulate the property market for short term, but if you have rising unemployment, you could end up having falling property prices as more, more and more properties are repossessed due to defaults and late payments, and that would impact, obviously, the U.S. regional banks, who are the biggest lenders in the residential and commercial property sector. So you could see U.S. regional banks failing as well, which I've stated again, there's about 282 banks on the verge of bankruptcy, and there's other probably tens of banks that are also potentially going to go bankrupt as far as the U.S. is concerned. That would cause further pressure on the Fed and the U.S. Treasury to print a load of money in order to bail out those banks. As we said in the webinar yesterday, we have regular webinars. We mentioned the webinar yesterday regarding property prices and interest rates and what impact they're going to have on residential property and on commercial property. So those people who attended the webinar obviously got first-hand view of what's going to happen overall in the real estate or property sector, as you call it, in the U.S. Uh, the U.K. also has a interim budget coming in, and that's going to um, that's going to somehow have to cover 22 billion black hole, 22 billion pounds black hole in the economy in the UK and um, so the chance they already started cutting benefits for the old age and uh, the people that are probably most vulnerable to save money there's going to have to be a major cost cutting exercise cost cutting exercise in the UK in order to balance the books and they're probably also going to have to raise taxes significantly to allow them to balance overall what's going on um, that's it for now. You can join the beginners course on the 25th of August. You can join the mentorship program. You can join the beginners group for one week for free to see how it is. You can book in a one-to-one. -one. Um, you can join the, we have Zoom calls, we have workshops, we've got um, online interactive sessions, updates. We've got the whole works on driving markets. Um, if you need any help, please contact me. Catch you later. Hi, good morning. This is Mayor Valensky on Tuesday, the 6th of August with Driving Markets is your daily podcast. Uh, remember that we run a mentorship program. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk about markets and the fact that they absolutely crashed yesterday and they've rebounded overnight. But remember, we run a mentorship program. You can book in a one to one if you so wish uh, with myself or with the team. We've also got a beginner's course on the 25th of August, um, you can have um, you can join the beginners class, join the mentorship. We cater for beginners, intermediates, advanced. Obviously, we need any help, any help whether it's to do with um, shares, stock, shares, options, crypto, foreign exchange, indices, commodities like gold and oil, palladium, silver, etc. We run live Zoom sessions, live trading sessions, courses, workshops, webinars, the full works. Okay, so if you want to join the program. On the mentorship program, just text me direct. We can um, obviously add you. Um, let's kick off. Right, so um, Japan went down 12% on Monday. Uh, the markets initially, NASDAQ, the Dow, S&P, UK were all down. The NASDAQ was down at one stage, right about 5.5%. Um, shares like NVIDIA had touched the target. I put, I put a sell notice on NVIDIA a little while ago at about um, 128 and then uh, I said the target price is 92 it actually touched 92 and then bounced up from there up to 101 so that was an interesting setup to say the least uh, so anyone who followed that would have been great also I did put on dollar yen dollar yen I said sell at 162 target price 142 one behold went to 141 so those who followed that foreign exchange trade would have done very well also Okay, so let's look at what really is driving markets at the moment. So what's driving markets at the moment is the fear of recession. So Mary Daly 
who is the president of the San Francisco Federal Reserve, said yesterday at a forum in Hawaii that uh, she's like, they're likely to see interest rates cut later this year. But the markets are looking for aggressive cuts. The markets want aggressive cuts because based on the economic numbers that came out last week, which I've said on many podcasts were pretty bad, to say the least. So every economic number coming out of the U.S. last week was poor. And that's frightened the markets. It's frightened the markets that we're going to go into recession. So the focus now on financial markets has changed from one of being, wow, we're going to have a soft landing for the first time ever in history. We're going to ride through this storm. There's no storm. It's going to be a little bit of a wind. The Fed has handled it really well. There's not going to be a banking crisis and everyone is doing fine with full employment turned around to be completely fake. As I've been saying nonstop for the last year and a half, the numbers coming out of Washington are not true. They're not real numbers. They are manipulated, manufactured, maneuvered numbers to make the economy look good under Biden economics. As Kamala Harris said, yeah, we're successful because of Biden economics. Absolute load of trash. The U.S. economy is not what it appears or not what it seems. In other words, behind this big cover-up of since the pandemic, you've got rising real unemployment, you've got commercial properties in tatters, you've got rising homelessness, rising crime, and you've got lower overall production with um, individual businesses, small to medium-sized businesses. And the small to medium-sized businesses are the businesses that actually drive the economy. Um, in addition to that, the small to medium-sized businesses have had a huge amount of legislation and regulation put on them in red tape that they can't seem to function with rising taxes and more regulation regarding employment. And yet, it's the small to medium-sized businesses that can actually affect employment and unemployment really, really quickly because they're the ones that make quick decisions that take on people and therefore they can reduce the high numbers of unemployment rapidly. But because of the because of all the red tape and the legislation put on these companies, they're practically impossible to function. And that's what's one of the central pieces in the equation. In addition to that, the high taxes and the um, high level of uh, duties that's put on sales and VAT or value added tax or sales tax is also causing a problem as far as the US is concerned. But that's more on a micro scale. As far as a macro scale, the interest rates that have been uh, raised since 2022, when Janet Yellen said that famous statement that inflation is transitory and then it shot up to something like 9% and hasn't really gone down. Well, I, why hasn't it gone down? Headline inflation that's reported has gone down, but the real cost of living that costs you the money to put out, your, whether your pound, your euros, or your dollars, is costing more and more money. So the cost of living is actually static or rising, not falling. But the numbers coming out of Washington regarding inflation are showing or trying to show a drop in the overall level of inflation, which is not really true, because inflation at 2.6% still means that prices are rising, they're just rising slower than they were, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Office of uh, Economic Management. So overall, you still have rising cost of living every month. That's why your cost of living is going up, because there is still inflation there. Now, the markets are aware of this, they were okay with it, until the economic numbers came out and showed that the U.S. is actually going into a potential recession. And that's what sent the Nasdaq, the Dow, and the S&P shuddering. Overnight, Japan has rebounded 7% from the 12% fall yesterday. But that could be a dead cat bounce, which means that the markets probably could go into another selling mode quite quickly. What they're looking for is to be pacified that rates are going to come down and rates are going to come down quickly. And as Mary Daly said, the, as I said, the, she's the uh, president of the San Francisco Federal Reserve speaking in Hawaii. She said that rates may come down later this year. And that's not really calming anyone. What the market wants to see is probably a rate cut in between 
Fed meetings and aggressive rate cuts to try and resuscitate the economy. But at this stage, it could be too little, too late. As what often happens with central banks, they act too late in controlling inflation, and then they act too late in reviving the economy after it's been hammered by rising interest rate costs that, costs that businesses and individuals can simply not afford to maintain. So what you're likely to see is more volatility in financial markets with a sentiment trending downwards in near term. Near term means in the next uh, few weeks to few week to few weeks until there is some clear direction what the central banks and the Fed are going to do regarding interest rates. So what's likely to happen is that there is going to be a recession. No one can avoid that. Not even not Trump can avoid. Trump's going to take over the presidency if he does take over the presidency, and there is going to be a recession in 2025. The question is how hard and how harsh a recession. Is it going to be? That's the real question as what we're talking about in terms of recession. There is going to be a recession, but no one knows how harsh, how hard a landing that's going to be, where the Fed is trying to avoid at all costs for it to be a hard landing. But really, they've got no chance because it never happened in the 100 years history of the Fed, the central bank in the US. Looking at a couple of assets, um, gold has come off all the way down. Yesterday went all the way down to 2366. It's about 2400. Still long term buy as far as gold is concerned. But remember, gold will be sold off if there is a recession. What will save gold is if there is huge buying, which there is by China and Russia, and also if there is a war in the Middle East, because it's a it's a go to asset in terms of when there is a crisis. That's it for now. Don't forget the beginners course on the 25th of August. And you can also join the mentorship program, book in a one-to-one, -one, and we do live trading. If you need anything, you can text me. This is Mayor Valensky with Driving Markets, your morning podcast. Have a great day. Good morning. This is Mayor Valensky on Wednesday, the 7th of August with your Driving Markets podcast. Let's have a look at what is driving markets. And the topic is, is there going to be a recession? Uh, are we going to go into recession? How are the market's going to react? Uh, remember that we've got a beginner's course on the 25th of August, if you get this podcast in time. In addition to that, we run a full mentorship program for beginners, intermediates, and advanced. How to trade from literally start to finish, including shares, options, indices, commodities like gold, oil, silver, palladium. We've got full FX you can trade. Of course, I've got crypto or premier section. You can book in one to ones. You can join the mentorship program. Uh, there's different packages and you can learn to trade and hopefully uh, get a hell of a lot of knowledge that I do guarantee and to hopefully be successful, which we can't guarantee, but that is the target goal. So let's kick off. Is there going to be a recession? Well, let's look at some of the numbers. There is a drop in manufacturing. There's the 11th that there's a Businesses now have the lowest lowest business confidence in 11 years. Uh, credit card delinquencies or late payments, as we're called, is the highest since 2008. If you ask any normal UK guy or American, is the recession? And they say yes already for the last 15 months. So when you ask them, they say, yeah, it's been um, started 15 months ago. Um, a poll in the U.S. by Guardian Harris uh, noted that 80% of Americans question believe there is a recession and it's only going to get worse. That's going to impact consumer confidence. So is there a recession? Well, the answer is yes, especially if you look at the small to medium-sized businesses that have seen a significant drop in their over uh, turn turnover volume and profitability. In fact, a lot of small businesses and medium size are now having difficulty paying the rent for the business to the landlord. That's mainly due to mortgages of 7% or 11% of credit card debt, which is 24%. There's more and more people using credit cards to buy food and groceries from the local store. And that is a very, very bad sign because you shouldn't be using credit card debt to feed yourself. It's only going to end up imploding and obviously as I've said many, many times, in the U.S., that's going to be the regional banks that are going to suffer because they're the ones that finance all this operation. 
as far as the UK is concerned, then the UK credit card companies are going to have to start writing off huge amounts of debt in order to rebalance their books. So you're going to have a rising unemployment. You're going to have a pro- unemployment go to about 10%. And markets now are looking and pushing for a interest rate cut. The total focus of financial markets now is not one interest rate cut, but a series of aggressive interest rate cuts. In other words, what they're trying to do is they're trying to force the hand in the US of Euro Powell. So you've seen recently a lot of volatility, obviously on Monday the 5th with a massive drop across the globe on financial markets. And if you look at the 6th, Tuesday the 6th pattern, there was a sell-off in the last hour. Even though the markets finished up, the markets finished up less than they were at the highs, which indicates nervousness and confusion as to which way the markets are going. Again, overnight in Asia, for example, the markets are up again. So any rise in financial markets under the present circumstances due to volatility and due to nervousness is an opportunity to sell into it. So where are we going a bit more short to medium term as opposed to one or two days? Well, and if there is going to be an interest rate cut, which would be brought about because of fears of recession, which is the topic of the, of the podcast, then it depends on how much of an interest rate cut the Fed is going to make. If it's going to be a quarter of a percent, the markets will drop significantly because that would be less than they expect. They want at least half percent interest rate cut based on economic numbers and fear of recession. And that could well happen. If they get a half percent cut, that will indicate and show that the Fed has taken responsibility, ownership, and having an overall view as to what to do regarding interest rates, which is what the Fed should be doing. However, based on an aggressive rate cut, the market would also interpret that the Fed is worried and concerned about the economy. Either way, once the interest rate cuts, the markets will fall. Why will it fall? That's a quite bold statement I'm going to make. The reason why they fall is because they will, indeed, they will clearly see that the Fed is concerned about the recession. That would put lack of confidence in the financial markets. So you could see a 10 to 15 percent fall overall. In between that fall, there'd be moments of volatility and there'd be moments where the market is going to be pushing higher and lower. So you can't just have a position whereby you trade and you hopefully it's going to go your way. You've got to manage risk. But the overall trend for the coming days and weeks is likely to be down based on pressure of a recession in the US and in Europe. There's nothing can avoid a recession now. Even if Donald Trump gets in, there'll still be a recession. Okay, so it's on the cards. It's already in momentum. Nothing's going to stop it. All depends on how deep the recession is going to be. Now, if they don't take control of the economy and start cutting back on expenses, migration, uh, migrants, sorry, housing, welfare benefits, then the recession will just get even worse because with $35 trillion of debt in the US, that is a major problem. And if they don't grab the bull by the horns, then what they're going to have is a situation where they'll go from recession into depression, which could lead to a 1970s style scenario. And that would be very, very bad, very, very difficult because 1970s was quite simple. It was a, it was a position of um, stagflation. And because it was a position of stagflation, which is no growth and rising inflation, then that is will take 10 years plus to come out of that. So either they take major action now and they get on with it and they grab the bull by the horns, which means cutting Federal spending, in the UK cutting public spending, both of those highly unlikely to happen. Quite simple, because the governments in place believe in spending huge amounts of money, and those huge amounts of money are there to buy them the votes, keep them in power forever, whether it's UK Labour Party, whether it's France uh, extreme left, or whether it's the progressive liberal Democrats in the US. So overall, I can't see at the moment, anyone taking ownership or taking 
the draconian action that's needed in order to avoid a deep recession. There will be recession, but the question is, will it be a deep recession? So as far what you need to look at when trading is looking at those companies that will be affected by a downward turn. The Mega 7 will fall significantly. The Nasdaq will fall, the Dow. And there will be other companies that are recession proof, which will be petroleum companies and, of course, will be um, high dividend paying companies. Um, if you want to join the mentorship program or want to want to one, then you can book it in with pleasure. Uh, we've also then got a crypto group, which is run by Jesse, which is fantastic. And if you need any more assistance, contact me. This is May Valensky with Driving Markets. Have a great day. Hey, good morning. This is May Valensky on Thursday, the 8th of August. This is your daily podcast, which goes to the mentorship group direct and then non-members can download it on Spotify, on uh, Google, on Apple, or whatever podcast platform that you use. Remember that we do run a full mentorship program. Um, we've got several packages to suit you. Um, it's one-on-ones, there's Zoom calls, workshops, courses, and um, daily input, WhatsApp groups, um, direct, um, there's daily trading, there's crypto, FX, stocks and shares, options, the works. Don't forget the beginner's course on the 25th of August. Uh, I'll be running that to teach you beginners from beginning, how to start, how to trade, what to look for, etc., etc. In addition to that, you've also got technical and charts analysis, which uh, Pete runs, and you can do that one-on-one -on -one with him, just book him in, etc., etc. Let's kick off. So a couple of things we need to talk about. China. So China's exports are falling fast and it's year on year exports are very very poor it's imports have risen exports have fallen and that is a very poor sign remember all along i've been stating many many times that china being the number two global economy needs to be strong in order to make sure that there's plenty of global trade between one country and another and they've seen a significant contraction in overall business activity in China. Remember, 65 to 70 percent of business in China is small businesses, and the the latest Communist Party chair and government or administration has uh, imposed a lot of regulation and legislation, which makes it governance, which makes it much more difficult on small businesses. But if you really think about it, that's quite consistent with the rest of the world. The rest of the world, look at America, UK, France, there is so much regulation, legislation put on the small businessman that it just isn't worthwhile anymore having a business because of employment law, because of minimum wages, because of all the social benefits they have to give their employees. From a businessman's perspective, it really is difficult to cope and to navigate in the present world of uh, regulation, legislation, which just seems to be endless red tape. As far as China is concerned, that has now become uh, perilous to open a business in China because of the, the social benefits and the legislation regulation put on the small businesses. So there is an overall downturn in business activity as far as China is concerned. Now, that is going to have a continuous impact on the West. In fact, some of the numbers that you saw out in the US, UK and Europe recently would reflect the downturn in Chinese activity. A strong China is good for Western economies. A weak China is poor for Western economies as much as there is a bit of tension between the US and China on trade tariffs. No one wants to see the end of Chinese business. What they want to see is a more balanced playing field. It's what, which is what has been missing in the last few years. So with that, in, with that in mind, you can see that America itself also showing signs of recession. So there's no recession yet in China, but the contraction of economic activity is running at a pace where if it does continue for another six, eight months, then you could actually see recessionary numbers in China, but they would, they would never declare that or state it simply because China being a communist state does not want to indicate 
or project any type of failure or weakness into Western governments and Western jurisdictions. So overall, Ch China's imports and exports are essential. And even moving on to other numbers this week, you've got the ISM. So you had the ISM at Industry Supply Management Non-Manufacturing Index came out in the US. Now that's business that deals with all non-manufacturing, healthcare, finance, construction, business. And it, overall, what it does, it takes a survey of the PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index report, and they go around and they ask and inquire about the business activity in relation to their particular sector. And that came out higher than expected. So the non-manufacturing number came out higher than expected, and the manufacturing number last week came out lower than expected. So what does this overall mean for the industries? Well, if you're looking at the economy or economic impact of this, you've got obviously things like healthcare. Now, healthcare is a big one in the US. So healthcare is huge because all the private insurance companies and Medi Medicare in the US are focused on healthcare. So with expanding healthcare, and that could be driven by pharmaceutical companies or could be driven just by overall um, uh, concerns about the economy or people seeking mental health. You've got that expanding. And then also you've got construction, which is very, very important. Construction is non-manufacturing. That's a non-manufacturing PMI. And that shows the activity of where the construction industry is in the US. And of course, if you have a building industry that is thriving, then you could... So if you've got an overall construction industry that is strong, a building sector that is strong, that is a good sign. So all the numbers coming out of the US need to be monitored and watched carefully. As regards financial markets, a lot of volatility. And if you notice that the markets can't seem to hold on to their gains. And because they can't hold on to their gains, that is a worrying sign. When markets can't hold on to their gains, then what you do have potentially is an opportunity to sell into the market, sell into the rally. So you take any movement upwards as an opportunity to sell. And then if you get that right and the market does reverse, then obviously you're going to make some money. And that's what happened yesterday on Wednesday, the 7th of August. You saw that the Dow, the Nasdaq, the S&P were all up there. We discussed this on the Zoom call in live trading for those people who are members of the mentorship group. And you saw that the markets were high. And I put out a signal to the mentorship group that you should be selling the Dow, the S&P, the Nasdaq and the FTSE at those highs. And um, they all made, or lots of people made, a few bucks on that trade because the markets were sold off completely. When markets are sold off at that level, that is a sign of nervousness, fear, and a potential bear market. So keep that in mind when trading. If you want to join the beginners course on the 25th of August, you need to text me. And um, also, if you want to join the mentorship course, with pleasure, you can join it. Give me a text, and we'll give you the op we'll give you the option of what's open to you. Okay. This is May Valensky with Driving Markets. Have a great day. Hi, good morning on Friday, the 9th of August, even though I'm away, I'm still committed to giving you the podcast. How committed is that, guys? Okay, don't forget we've got a live options trading class on the 14th of August. That's Wednesday, the 14th, 6 p.m. If you want to join, text me. There is a fee for joining, just to let you know. And also, don't forget a beginner's, beginner's course class on the 25th of August. Don't forget those. We've also got mentorship. We've got one-to-one. -one. We can teach you in on Zoom calls. You've got workshops. You've got courses. You've got um, live trading sessions. We've got beginners. We've got crypto FX. Let's kick off. So markets yesterday shot up. So they've had a huge degree of volatility. But what has caused this volatility? Where exactly are we sitting and what triggered it is the major question that is asked across the board. What triggered this volatility? Well, in order to understand that, you've got to understand how hedge funds operate and what is a carry trade. So hedge funds operate whereby they are trading on margin, exactly the way you trade on your personal retail account, where you um, only pay for a percentage of the trade and the rest of it is financed. That is called margin trading. So margin trading, it's quite simple. If a 
goods cost $100, you are putting down, putting down $30, and the rest of the $70 is loaned to you under margin, under a loan account, under leverage. Okay, so you'll end up paying interest on that throughout the year. Hedge funds work on that way. What they do is they put down 10, 20, 30% money, and they buy 100% worth of product. So a hedge fund essentially has huge leverage, and that is what has been driving markets for many, many years. For these hedge funds, the start of the hedge funds and the accessibility to Joe Public has given some of these hedge funds hundreds of billions, some trillions, but hundreds of billions of dollars or pounds to trade. And what do they do? They go and leverage up. So instead of buying a hundred million dollars worth of stock, they've got they can buy three hundred million dollars worth of stock, and therefore, they um, when the trade goes their way, they've got a lot more exposure to that particular stock, which gives them a lot more profitability. However, if the trade goes against them, then they could have a margin call. This is exactly what happened last week with Japan. What happened? If you look at the dollar yen, look at dollar yen. Dollar yen was 162 plus. Now I was calling on everyone to sell dollar yen at 162. I put it on Instagram, YouTube. I put it on the beginners. I put it on the mentorship groups. Sell dollar yen. Sell dollar yen. And dollar yen dropped from 162 to 142. Why did dollar yen drop from 162 to 142? For a number of reasons, but the central reason is, without boring you all to tears, is that the Bank of Japan stated that after 20 years, the zero interest rate policy is coming to an end. They didn't say how much they're going to raise interest rates. They didn't say to what um, level, what's their strategy. They just said that the interest rate, zero interest rate policy is coming to an end. And the, the yen then strengthened from 162 to 142. Okay, that's 2,000 pips or uh, 20 cents. Now, what happened is essentially is that up until recently, hedge funds and investment funds have been borrowing money in the end, paying zero interest, converting that money into US dollars and getting 5% interest, or even more, using the money to buy uh, dollar yen assets or by US assets like NVIDIA, for example. One of the reasons why NVIDIA surged up is because all the hedge funds bought huge amounts of NVIDIA on money borrowed from yen in zero interest, pushing the stocks higher, which is called manipulation. That's one of the areas of manipulation. And as a result of that, the stock market actually shot up. And they've shot up because the hedge funds have been borrowing money in yen, converting it into US dollars. Not only that, the yen's been getting weaker and weaker, so they made money on their dollars and made money on their trades. Everything is absolutely hunky-dory. It is paradise. It is Garden of Eden. It is heaven. You're not only making money on your currency exchange, you're also making money on the stocks because you're using that zero boring interest rate currency called the Japanese yen to go and buy US stocks until the yen strengthened. Once the yen strengthened from 162 to 142, that pushed all of the hedge funds into a margin call. And therefore, they had to liquidate all their assets. The drop in the Japanese stock market of 12.5% in one day is the biggest drop, even bigger than the 1987 crash. 12.5% in one day, it is huge. It's a huge drop. And that's what sent markets down. Why? Because all of these hedge funds that have borrowed money in the end have now margin call to pay their foreign exchange costs. They then have to go and exchange their dollars into yen, have to sell their assets to exchange into dollars, the dollars into yen, and buy the yen back, which pushed the yen even higher. And that is an example of where stock markets will crash. There is always a trigger to stock markets falling. Always. There's always some event which is unknown to everyone, which will cause stock markets to crash. I don't know the event, and no one knows the event, but when it happens, it happens. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, when I was calling for everyone to sell dollar yen, it was done on fundamentals, 
and it was done on technicals because the dollar yen was simply far too high at that stage. It was completely overvalued, just like the stock markets were overvalued a week ago, two weeks ago, and therefore the now they have completely pulled back. And you can expect further pullbacks on US stock markets, UK stock markets, and European stock markets. However, in between those, in between those pullbacks, you will also have days that are, re that are rising. Like yesterday, on Thursday, the 8th of August, the stock market shot up. They came off the highs, which I did say they would come off the highs, but at one stage, the Dow was up 724 points on a relief rally where there had to be short coverings of the short positions and the fact that the jobless claims came in lower than expected and that relieved the financial markets that there's not going to be a recession but there is going to be a recession they just feel as though oh there may not be a recession but as per usual they're fooling themselves there is going to be a recession we'll discuss this on the live options class on the 14th and obviously the beginners on the 25th but there is going to be a recession and they are now just had a quick relief rally say oh thank god the numbers aren't as bad as we thought everything's back to normal it's not back to normal the markets will continue falling but in between the fall you are going to have spectacular days like yesterday where markets will go up three to four percent in one day and that is often a characteristic of a bear market so when you're looking overall at bear markets which were not yet in even though the Nasdaq's in correction territory. We're not yet in a bear market because the upward trend line has not been broken. A bear market is completely different trading to a bull market, and most people don't even know how to trade a bear market. So when people say, oh, they're going to make money on the downturn, what most people do might make initial money on the downturn, but they don't make continuous money on the downturn because they don't know how to trade in a bear market. And that's where driving markets mentorship group will come in with specific hands-on help and that's something that you need to exploit and um, by the way if, you, if you're a beginner and you don't know how to trade which some of you have come on so you actually don't even know how to open an account then you need to contact me and definitely join the beginners course that's a separate issue completely but as far as where we're going going forward we're going to have a higher higher volatility where the VIX which is the volatility index is going to continue rising and there will be dramatic swings. So in terms of direction overall and the fundamentals, we are looking at a downward spiral, but intraday, intraweek, you could have relief rallies and short covering of positions as traders look to maximize the profits on the directions that they've chosen. Um, that's it for now. So don't forget the live options on the 14th of um, August, 6 p.m. UK time, there's a registration fee and the beginner's course on the 25th of August. Catch you then.